Welcome back. It's the Pulse. And we're still discussing Anas's uh, video. And last night, there was premiering of the investigative piece titled Number 12. Some Ghanaians who watched it had a shock of their lifetime. Now, joining me in the studio uh, is uh, Jerome Autry, who is a former spokesperson of Asante Kotoko. We'll be delving into that conversation, but we put the question on Facebook, how you feel or what you feel about parliament handling or uh, opening investigations into corruption in Ghana football. Let's check out what you've been saying. A lot of reactions there. And Nano Fusua says, what is there to investigate? Is it that we do not understand what we say or we are just confused as a nation? Is it an issue of semantics or we just don't know exactly what to say? What are they going to investigate again? Ah, in Tigana Pani, Anna, okay, and she puts a question there. And Akpalu Akpa says, How, where? Were they, where were they when uh, Jamesi Commission issued a white paper on their finding? We want the military to take over the investigations. And Tijani Ahmed Jallu says, this is absolutely, okay, that's a bit too harsh uh, for a word to use. Uh, he says, what kind of investigation again do they need aside this? Anyway, I'm not surprised because they themselves are all corrupt, so they are trying to cover up things. But believe me, we are not going to allow this if these football people are not imprisoned. And Godson Kwame says, is it that somebody is not thinking for us as a leader or leaders? Parliament investigate GFA. Why is it that we don't have any trust with the investigators and the public um, investigative institutions anymore? GFA issues are straightforward. There is evidence in the form of video. Interrogations is pitched against the video. That is all. So what do Parliament, what does Parliament want in this? So, so let's keep the conversation on Facebook. Send in your comments and let's see how you feel about this whole thing. Let's get on to our conversation with Jerome Autry. He is the former spokesperson of Asante Kotoko. And so, good to have you. Thank you. Now, um, let me gauge your mood. I know you watched it yesterday. How did it come across to you that, I mean, there's so much rot in Ghana's football, especially with its president taking that huge Let's, amount as bribe? Uh, let me just do a small correction. I, I'm a former editor of Kotoko Express. Okay, former the, editor the, yeah, of Kotoko. official newspaper of Kotoko. Express, not, okay. Not, not a spokesperson. But right. uh, to, your, to your question, I was very shocked and surprised and also sad uh, watching the video yesterday afternoon. I felt so bad at some point that I wished the, the video was ending. I mean, I, I just felt that if, if, it does, if it wasn't going to end at some point, maybe some of us will collapse. Because I was shivering, uh, wow. looking at some of the things that happen or have gone on behind the scenes. And perhaps because in some instances, some of us were very close to the, to the stories or to the incidents. And then we also spoke about it so passionately, feeling that there was something particularly wrong with, with some of the matches that were compromised. But you see, we didn't have evidence. I mean, we couldn't tell exactly what went wrong, yet we could feel that something might have gone wrong, therefore influencing certain referee, refereeing behavior. For example, the referee Samuel Suka, officiating a match between Hatsopok and Asante Kotoko in March last year. And then, after 80 minutes, I mean, we could tell that that game was going to end probably in a goalless draw. Then, with some eight minutes to end the game, he gave a penalty to Hatsopok. And television replays, that was after the game, clearly showed that the ball hit the back of a Kotoko defender, Ahmed Adams. But the referee gave a penalty. Mm. In fact, I felt that Suka at that moment was a very poor referee. Mm. And I remember putting on Facebook that if I were him, I would have given my FIFA referee badge to Docs. Because that decision, I, I mean, we know referees make 
mistakes. But some of the mistakes are too... It's just unpardonable. Are just so bad that you cannot make any sense out of it. And now you can relate to oh, this course. video you watched I mean, yesterday. Can't you see what, I mean, Parnassus' work? It, it, we could then tell, oh, so this is why he did this. He okay. took a goat. I mean, he, he, he took money to determine where that match should go. And I think that yesterday, watching such things, uh, clearly told me that it is not worth following our football. Mm. Because if you have, for instance, this season, we have 120 referees officiating in the Premier League. And if you have close to 60 or more of these referees being compromised, what it tells me is that, I mean, he's, it's a complete waste following our game. And right. I think that the FA needs to sit up. Everybody concerned with football in this country must be worried because we do not have a clean system running football in this country. I think the conversation has just begun. And of course, it's, uh, let's, I want us to listen to some people who had the opportunity to watch the video last night uh, at the Accra International Conference Center. Thing. Okay. Shocking. Okay. I mean, this sport is the passion of the nation. And then what happened at the tail end, I just don't, I just don't get it. Okay. And then what punishment would you suggest they give to them? I'm not going to suggest any punishment. Okay. The authorities should watch it okay. and then do what they ought to do. They should do the need for it. It's an interesting watch. Uh, I would say that it didn't live up to its billing. But generally, I think that it has posed a lot in Ghanaian sports. And uh, there's a lot to do to redeem the image of Ghana sports. And so we look forward uh, to seeing some real action by the players in the industry and by the government as well. We want to see how this matter is dealt with, the test case for us as a nation. And uh, we hope that it doesn't go the way that it normally goes, where there's public euphoria. And then after the euphoria, nothing happens. We want to see some real action, people taking to tax for this kind of behavior. Seemingly responsible person will make such uh, statements uh, to the public. And the president was emphatic in saying that he knows next to nothing about what uh, Chris Gentesi is purported to have said. So I think that's the rest the story as far as the presidency is concerned. But Chris Gentesi, if actually that is what happened, he acted very recklessly and very irresponsibly. I think that if we we'll go further, and I'm also urging a lot of companies to come with undercover investigation, and it will help, so nobody will be saved in this country. So if you think you are investigating somebody, there should be also somebody who can also investigate the investigator. But that doing, I think Ghana will, will, will go far. Because corruption is killing us in this country. Corruption is killing us in this country. And most of these things happen from 2016, uh, 2015, 2014. So I think, I think political parties should not take credit that, oh, this power corrupt. It happened from 2014 when everybody was not in power to 2017. Okay, so this also will boost the investment uh, community, the Amura, to come to Ghana that there is something going on. So reaction from the streets or from the Accra International Conference Center after they watched that shocking video. And on the streets of Accra, the reactions was that of shock and disbelief at how persons entrusted with management of Ghana football were compromising the game in order to profit uh, themselves. In the video, I felt so sad as a Ghanaian, and I'll be surprised if Yante she should leave in his own home till the next day. And I'll be very disappointed, and I'm calling on the Chief Justice, the IGP, and the CID boss. Now, the President too must step aside in his vice. The ministers in question must be called to order. They have to call them immediately, call for the arrest. Kenya Pong, who has been bugging, making noise 24 7, irritating us. Only for us to discover that his, part, his name is part in the video. Because Kwesin Yantechi categorically stated that Kennedy has become more or less a problematic and obstacle in the party, making a whole lot of noise. And you see, because he's a financier, the president finds it difficult to do anything about him. But the president decided to shout him down. The president decided to create a ministry, a ministry which was in existence for Kennedy. So now the question here is, if that had happened, can you imagine the corruption aspect or the corruption that would have rolled in that ministry? Now, Kwesi Nyantechi had the gas to slap you and I and my brother covering me and you 
and the whole country, slapping us on our face by selling the country to an investor, not even a group of investors, but a single investor, telling the investor that all he needs is to produce 11 million. He gives the president five, the vice three, the minister in charge of that business or the transaction, the sector, takes two. Then the remaining one, he takes it with the deputy minister. I have watched the video, but I'm sad. I am sad for this country because I feel Nyan Techi and his political cronies have decided to sell Ghana. Because politically, he tells us that in two years, you become a politician. And that time, the vice president will become the president of the republic. He and the president, a uh, vice president, are planning to establish a fertilizer factory. And when they do that one, he will control the republic. And that when the investors bring the money, he will use the money and pay his way. He will pay his way, pay everybody. And then they will be able to control the state. Now, if I need...